Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be debuting a new segment that will hopefully allow me to look at more artists. There is so much music, especially right now, that's coming out that I want to talk about, but realistically I don't have enough time for it. So instead of trying to do a full review of every album that I want to talk about, I want to try out a segment where I talk about three or so albums and just leave one to go in depth about. This week, we're going to be talking about the new Queens of the Stone Age album, Villains, the soon-to-be-released Jay Bird sophomore album, Time Scared, and the short but sweet Pariahs EP, Let There Be Light. Let's start off with Villains. This is the seventh album by stoner rock giants Queens of the Stone Age. The band got their start as the desert rock band Caius, who released a few albums in a similar vein in the 1990s. After their breakup, John Holm formed Queens of the Stone Age. Queen's last album, Like Clockwork, had a straightforward rock sound that sometimes diverted into David Bowieism filled ballad The Vampire of Time and Memory, and the title track, and Queen-tinged Fairweather Friends. Aside from these occasional diversions, the album kept a fairly heavy, mid-paced sound. This new album sees them experimenting further, especially compared to the previous album. This isn't terribly new for Queen's, though. On their 2000 LP, Rated R, the short straight to the pointless is extremely noisy and visceral, and the closing track ends with some squealy experimental jazz saxophone. This album sees them exploring the disco-tinged rock of 2000s tracks like Franz Ferdinand's Take Me Out, albeit done much better, and Finger Eleven's mega-hit Paralyzer. Domesticated Animals and Fortress t are more minimal tracks, the first reminiscent of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard's Mr. Beat, with a slightly less freaky irregular time signature of 7-8 as opposed to Mr. Beat's 13-8s, and the second including some spacey synth that build into a huge and cinematic track by the end in the style of a post-rock track. Head Like a Haunted House is a goofy punk track led by a really frantic bass line. The last stretch of the album sees them playing more straightforward tracks, though, that are more characteristically queen, such as Unreborn Again, The Evil Has Landed, and Villains of Circumstance, although Villains has this similar post-rock buildup as Fortress does. A lot of these tracks leave a lot to be desired musically, though, as the ideas tend to fall flat sometimes. Head Like a Haunted House sounds extremely out of place among the more brooding tracks here, and The Way You Used to Do is a painful flashback to Jet's Are You Gonna Be My Girl with its bouncy staccato guitar riff, ever-present clapping, and its really middle-of-the-road chorus. There isn't anything wrong with Domesticated Animals with its touch of David Bowie vocal delivery and weird guitar flourishes, but it sounds so similar to Mr. Beat that it makes me want to go listen to Nonagon Infinity instead of listening to this track. There are a few cool cuts on this album, though. The opener has really fun and smooth instrumentation, and the vocals serve the music great with this really soulful and seductive delivery on the first verse especially. I like how the guitar and vocal rhythm is a little off-kilter, but the track stays grounded with the drum work. I also like the weird guitar work at the beginning of Domesticated Animals, but I just wish that they expanded on this a little further instead of focusing on the minimal staccato guitar rhythm that they use in the first half. The bass tone is also great on this song. It's so thick and full. Fortress and Villains of Circumstance are the most beautiful tracks on the album, and they build as tracks fantastically up to a satisfying climax. The spacey synth in Fortress adds a nice texture to the relatively stripped back music, and the song is one of the more uplifting ones on the album. Villains of Circumstance is even more of a slow burner, but it has several build-ups and breakdowns with the best drum work on the album. Unreborn Again also has a really heavy sound that I look for in Queens, but also sounds quirky and beautiful and has a very airy vocal delivery over the chorus. Overall, I commend Queens for the ambition on this album and expanding their sound further. Although a few tracks don't really work out for me, there are a couple of really cool tracks from this album. I was a little disappointed by the lack of an overarching lyrical theme, though. Josh Holmes spoke of the idea that everyone needs a villain to their story, and this album wants to convey this, along with making people want to dance. While I can definitely see that in the two opening tracks and Head Like a Haunted House, it doesn't come across as clearly on the remaining cuts on the record, with its weird, moody, and slow-burning instrumentation. The villain's theme only comes across every so often as well, but Fortress has some incredibly uplifting lyrics about not being afraid to hide your true self, and the narrator is there as a force of encouragement and safety for whoever they're speaking to. Hopefully their next album will see them nailing this weird and diverse style that they are going for with more dedication to the album's themes and tones. Next up we have Time Scared by Jaybird. Time Scared? Time not scared of anything! This is the second full-length album by Long Beach psych rock group Jaybird. Their self-titled debut album featured short and straightforward bluesy psych rock tracks. This new album sees them exploring much longer tracks from the get-go with the 10-minute title track that features a more upbeat sound. 
This song is a chilled out psych rock piece that is centered around a bouncy bass line and some strict back guitar chords. The guitars leave a lot of negative space for all kinds of sounds and distortion to enter. The track is repetitive and lets the ideas marinate for a long time while occasionally being peppered with very up close and slightly distorted vocals, similar to something that King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard would do on one of their more straightforward and bluesy garage rock albums like Oddments or Float Along, Fill Your Lungs. The rest of the album follows a similar formula as the first track, but most of the tracks are significantly shorter and with slight variations on this sound that's cemented here. Paper Trung is much fuller and optimistic and is led with a bluesy guitar riff. The guitar work on Go Home Light and Head Race are reminiscent of Rush's self-titled debut, but with more laid-back drumming and more use of negative space. Pill Hole brings to mind Let Me Mend the Past from Float Along Fill Your Lungs, but with a more relaxed and repetitive sound and without the touch of distorted soul that King Gizzard managed to add. The Window is an unsettling experiment in soundscapes that sees its short runtime encased in eerie and alien instrumentation. And the closing track can be seen as an extension of these weird soundscapes, where the entire track is led by the repetitive guitar picking immersed in uncomfortable and spacey noise. The vocals stay consistently relaxed over the course of the album, and could benefit from a more energetic delivery to counter the also relaxed instrumentation. There's a bit of a lack of balance across the album, and almost every facet of the music is doused in this laid back and lazy atmosphere. Keep in mind that repetition is certainly not a bad thing. Winter Sun's The Forest Seasons features four tracks that are all heavily repetitive, and the opener to Leprous' album Cole is based around the same 7 8 rhythm throughout its 6 minute runtime, but these are counteracted by intense and passionate vocal performances. The album revolves around themes of fear, escaping your fears, and loneliness. Pill Hole is about the narrator using drugs to escape their problems, but at the same time this makes them feel isolated and lost in their own thoughts. In Paper Tongue, the singer feels so disconnected from society and stays inside so much that he doesn't even remember what the sun looks like. And he yearns for human touch, specifically of a woman and her hair. Go Home Light focuses more on the feeling of being trapped inside of your mind. This feeling of being trapped inside your mind comes up a lot in the lyrics. And even though the music has a lazy and relaxed atmosphere, the lyrics show it's more characteristic of feeling empty from the emotional disconnect that comes with losing touch with people. There are a few instances, though, where the lyrics feel more like a vocal sound painting than conveying some rigid idea. The lyrics in the title track, for example, convey weird imagery more than they do a definite concept, but it's difficult to make out what exactly is being conveyed from the vocal delivery. Overall, I really enjoyed the first couple of tracks here. It's a nice piece of relaxed and spacey psych rock that has a DIY feel to it. Over the course of the album, though, it can become a bit monotonous and could definitely benefit from a break in the repetition or from a more emotionally dynamic vocal delivery. It could also be more ambitious in its experimentation. If Jaybird can learn to embrace the blues and psychedelic aspects that make up their music more fully and connect them more intimately with the album's dark themes, then they have a great chance of making a gripping and emotionally twisted album. And finally, let's talk about Let There Be Light. This is the most recent EP by Pennsylvania-based melodeath group Pariahs. They released their debut, Saturnine, in 2015, this was a decent, if not slightly derivative, addition to the Melodeath Sphere with its muscly riffage and affinity towards some melodic deathcore in the style of the Black Dahlia Murder. While that band is more akin to deathcore tipping its nose into Melodeath, Saturnine is the exact opposite of its approach with melodic death metal that occasionally flirts with deathcore riffage or a breakdown. This new EP sees a more refined pariahs with pristine and cleaned up production and the band dripping in atmosphere. This is clear from the beginning as the opener starts off the album with some quiet and eerie picking in the same fashion as Kalma's Dance of the Water. Some beautiful and light orchestration is introduced and the track explodes into a thrashy melodeath. There is an interlude about halfway through the song that features more string instrumentation, played in a waltzy fashion. It adds a nice contrast to the rest of the track that remains aggressive and mid-paced, although it slows down for the chorus. The transition into the chorus feels a little awkward, though and as a result, the slow tempo and clean vocals feel a bit jammed in. Although, the transition into the orchestral interlude later is expertly done, and is one of the best clean vocal performances on the EP. One of the highlights of this song, and of the album in general, is the captivating vocal performance. Louis Thierry's vocals go from mid-ranged and guttural to shredding high-pitched shrieks with a couple of clean lines in the opener. Each track on here explores a new style. A Shade Darker Than Black forgoes the band's deathcore tendencies and focuses on a style closer to tech death. It immediately starts with pummeling drums and a guitar bellow from Lewis. Even when crossing over into the more brutal songwriting, Pariahs managed to incorporate plenty of melodic hooks seamlessly and blend it into the beautiful instrumentation. 
The track flows from idea to idea flawlessly over a short run time. The piano is also a nice touch, giving the track a more ominous edge and transitioning nicely into the short instrumental A Somber Dream, which begins to sound like a musical theme from Castlevania before the track ends. The closer is reminiscent of the meaty riffs off their debut, but in an almost power metal framework, with fast-paced double kicks scattered across the track. This track has the most aggressive vocal delivery, with piercing shrieks near the end of it, dancing around the stop-and-go double kicks and chugging guitars. This pattern is used earlier in the song as well, but it becomes more tense and aggressive when it's used near the end. The songwriting here is extremely commendable in how the band repeats an idea but then ensures that each iteration has an interesting twist. This track also has some of the greatest transitions between passages, the best being where it sounds like the band is about to go into a breakdown, but then they pick up the speed again and goes into a black metal segment complete with blast beats and tense orchestration. Strings can be heard here, but they are much more subtle than in the opening tracks. The EP ends suddenly with one last shriek from Lewis. Pariah's debut saw them stumble production and sound-wise, but here they sound more cohesive than ever with incredibly tight and seamless songwriting, aside from an awkward transition or two on the opener. This is a very promising EP that shows Pariah's have what it takes to craft compelling and aggressive tracks that retain a sense of melody. The Philadelphia scene is already home to a tremendous list of groups, from horrendous to illustrium to lore, and with this EP, Pariah's can easily join the ranks of these outstanding artists. Alright, I think that's going to be it for this segment. Expect a review of the new Leprous LP soon, and let me know what you think of these artists, whether you're into them or if you don't care for their music much or whatever. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.